A journey that will bring me to a strange and dark place. To the edge of the sea, high atop Widow's Hill. A house called Collinwood. A world I've never known, with people I've never met. People who tonight are still only shadows in my mind, but who will soon fill the days and nights of my tomorrows. never boils. Quite a phrase. Don't you think you ought to look in on your son? The little monster's asleep and I'm delighted. I choose my words with infinite precision. Roger, you're a fool. Not one tenth a fool you are, my dear. Look at you standing at the window looking out in the night, waiting for someone who should never have been asked to come here in the first place. She'll work out very well, I'm sure. Doing what? Holding my little son's hand, comforting you and the shutters creak. Elizabeth, with all our ghosts, we don't need any strangers in this house, and you know it. I think I can be the judge of that. But you don't even know the girl. Elizabeth, I'm your brother. I'm thinking only of your own welfare. Why bring somebody all the way up from New York to do something we're perfectly capable of handling ourselves? because I choose to do so. Oh, come to your senses, Elizabeth. When the girl arrives, give her a month's salary and tell her to go back where she came from. Why don't you open the doors and let the whole town come trooping through the house and have done with it? The girl will stay. You are a fool, Elizabeth. Yes, you are. Inviting problems. The only problem I've invited is standing before me at this moment. I have asked Miss Winters to live here and she'll stay. trouble getting a taxi. Do you have my letter? Yes, it's in my purse. May I see it, please? Of course. Thank you. I've never been in such a big house before, Mrs. Stoddard. How many rooms do you have? There are 40, but they're not all in use. It's quite cold. I put on some tea. Would you like to wait in the drawing room? Thank you. 40 rooms? You must need an awful lot of people to help you take care of it. We have one man for the heavy work, Miss Winters. We do the rest ourselves.
He built this house, Miss Winters. Oh, I didn't hear you come in. Jeremiah Collins, my great-grandfather. He was a very strong man, Miss Winters. How often I've wished that... How do you like your tea? Lemon or cream? Well, lemon will be fine, thank you. I think it's wonderful that you can manage this house with only one person. The east wing was closed over 50 years ago. We only used part of the rest. One lump or two? One, thank you. Are you expecting someone else? I asked my brother Roger to come down to meet you. You're, you're to care for his son and tutor. What kind of a boy is he? You'll meet him in the morning. I know, but I mean... Is he friendly? Is he inquisitive? Does he like to play games? Oh, I know when I was nine... Miss Winters, I... David is likely to be different from any boy you've ever met. Roger, we're in the drawing room. Roger, I said... I hope you'll be comfortable. It's very nice. I slept on that bed every night until... until I was married. All we had in the orphanage were cots. Plain iron cots. I'm sure you'll have ample draw space. Mrs. Stoddard, I've been meaning to ask you... Yes? Why did you offer me this position? You've never seen me before. Does it matter? I'd like to know. Simple enough, Miss Winters. My brother knew someone at the foundling home where you worked. He asked for a recommendation. But I asked, and they said they'd never heard of you. You must have you... asked the wrong person. No, you'll have to excuse me now. you home so early. Neither did I. What happened, darling? Is something wrong? Oh, nothing. What is it, baby? What is it? Why is it impossible for me to enjoy myself? Well, why don't I make some tea and, and you and I... No cakes, no tea. All I want to do is go to bed. You sure nothing's wrong? Mother, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of trying. That sounds horrible. I can't understand Joe Haskell. Oh, it wasn't his fault. Carolyn, you don't know how I worry about you. I know, Mother. But let's face it, you love this house. And that's just grand for you. But every chance I find to walk away from here and, and find a little brightness, well, how can you ask me to give it up? Well, there are other ways. When I was 10 years old, I used to dream that a white knight would come along and rescue me from this dungeon. Guess white knights have gone out of style. I thought you liked Joe Haskell. Carolyn, darling, all I ever pray for is for you to be happy. Joe loves you. And I like him, but he's not a white knight, Mother. We can't always get everything we want. I'm going to try. So please, please stop trying to marry me off. Okay? Besides, how do you expect me to go away and leave you alone in this beautiful nut house? I won't be. 
Not anymore. You mean she actually came? A few minutes ago. She's a nice girl, Carol, and you'll like her very much. All I can say for her mother, she must be out of her mind. What do you think you're doing? Suppose you tell me what you were doing. Elizabeth, you're my sister, not my warden. Roger. That girl was brought here to care for your son. Your son, Roger, not you. What's coming now? The lesson on morals? No, not a lesson on morals. Just a simple statement. You repeat tonight's episode and I'll have to ask you to pack your things and leave. Elizabeth, all I wanted to do was talk to the girl. Then knock on her door. I want you to remember that Victoria Winters is not only an employee, she is a guest in my house and I want her treated with as much respect as... As much respect as you'd give Burke Devlin? Burke Devlin. What's he Don't got tell to... me you've forgotten the name. What's he got to do with this? It seems that your little Miss Winters wasn't the only one who got off the train tonight. She had a fellow passenger. Burke? Yes. Somehow I knew he'd come back. Well, what do you intend to do about it? Nothing. Nothing? You can't be serious. Why do you think he's in Collinsport? It's his home. Elizabeth, listen to me. Burke is not that poor kid that once worked for us. Not anymore. He's made a lot of money. What happened between you and Burke Devlin was finished ten years ago. But then why do you think he's here? I don't know. That's what I wanted to ask her. Miss Winters? She was with him on the train, Elizabeth. They rode to the hotel together. He might have said something to her. I don't want her involved. But she is involved. She's here. Roger. I warned you, didn't I, Elizabeth? I warned you not to bring anyone into this house. Roger, keep your voice down. I'm fed up with your telling me what I can do and what I can't do. I'm as much a member of this family as you are. Roger, if you can't control Elizabeth, your someone has come back to destroy me, maybe to kill me, and I'm not going to just sit here and do nothing. If you say you're a Collins, well, then act like one. If there's a problem to face, examine it. Look into it, but don't, don't reject it. Shall I do as you do? Shall I hide my head and wait for it to disappear? I'm not prepared to spend my life the way you have, sitting in this house, waiting, never going out. That's not my way, and it never will be. A beautiful speech, Uncle Roger. Just beautiful. We really should have this door soundproof, don't you think? Just a little family discussion, kitten. Nothing for you to worry about. Why don't you go on back up to bed? I will. As soon as you answer one question. Who's trying to kill you? Carolyn, how long have you been outside that door? Not long enough or I wouldn't have to ask. Who is it? Burke Devlin? Where did you hear that name from? It was Vicky. She mentioned it. Did I say something wrong? What did she say? Only that she told Uncle Roger Mr. Devlin had given her lift from the railroad station. And you almost blew a fuse. Oh, I told her she must have been mistaken. But you don't jump that easily. Unless you have a good reason. Darling, this is not your affair. How can you say that if someone's trying to hurt Uncle Roger? Your mother's right, kitten. Besides, it's, it's nothing I can't handle myself, really. So what was all the yelling about? Well... Who is Burke Devlin, anyway? A man we used to know. He's not here to harm anyone. Kitten, do you happen to know if Miss Winters is away? With all this racket? How could she help it? Well, I wonder if you'd mind going upstairs and asking her to come down. Roger? If Carolyn doesn't go up and bring her down, Elizabeth, I'll do it myself. Ro Carolyn, I want you to go to bed now. I'm quite serious about this, Elizabeth. I intend to talk with Miss Winters tonight, one way or the other. What can you possibly expect Well, let her? me be the judge of that. Whoa. I just want to know. Whoa, both of you. I told you to go to bed. I will, Mother. But what about Vicky? <laughs> I suppose you might as well ask her to come down. Believe me, kitten, all I want to do is ask her a few questions. All right. I'll tell her. Well, that was a delight.
delightful exhibition, wasn't it? I hope you're proud of yourself. All right, Elizabeth. Just because one man wants to come back to Collingsport. One man! All right! Look at them, Roger, lined up on the wall. Isaac Collins, Jeremiah Collins, Theodore, Benjamin. How would they handle this problem, if there really is a problem? Elizabeth, I'm going to fight every way I can. But please understand this. It may be an unpleasant fact, but it's true. I'm not Isaac. I'm not Jeremiah. I'm not any of them. I'm me, Roger Collins. I'm going to fight my way. As long as you insist on doing this, at least let me talk to her. I don't care who talks to her, as long as we find out. Come in, Miss Winters. Sit down. We're very sorry to disturb you so late, but I'm sure this won't take more than a moment. Carolyn said Mr. Collins wanted to talk to me. Yes, about a man named Burke Depp. Oh, you met her on the train from New York? No. Oh, but you said you did. Roger, please. I said I met him at the Collins Port Station after I got off the train. He gave me a lift to the hotel. And of course, you told him you were coming here to Collins. I saw no reason not to. Did he say anything about us? Mrs. Stoddard, I don't understand. Now, Miss Winters, my sister asked you a question. Did Burke Devlin say anything about any of us? Nothing in particular. Did he tell you why he came back to Collinsport? No. Thank you very much, Miss Winters. I think we can all go to bed. Oh, I think not, Elizabeth. Miss Winters, you wouldn't mind keeping a lonely man company for a little while longer, would you? Well, it's awfully late. And Five I... minutes, ten. No longer, I promise you. I'm really quite a nice fellow. Good night, Elizabeth, and don't worry. I promise to be on my very best behavior. Roger, I don't like... Sleep well, dear. Good night, Miss Winters. What do you want? What are you doing down here? I was looking for Who are you? Now, just a minute. I wasn't... I doing... asked you a question, miss, and you better answer me. Who are you and what are you doing down here in the basement of this house? I wasn't... I wasn't snooping around. I want the truth, miss. Please, you're hurting me. You want to hurt Mrs. Stoddard, don't no. you? No. Why are you people fooling around down Matthew, here? Matthew, what are you doing? Oh, Mrs. Stoddard, this crazy man... Matthew, what's happening down here? I tried to explain, Just but Just a minute, didn't... Miss Winters. Matthew? She was snooping around here, ma'am. Who is this man, Mrs. Stoddard? Matthew works for me. What was she doing? Well, ma'am, I was upstairs getting ready to clean out the fireplaces, and I heard this noise down in the basement. I was looking for David. Go on. So I figured I'd better come and see what was the trouble. I got to the head of the stairs, there she was, trying to get in that room. I thought David might have been hiding in there. It's only a storeroom, Miss Winters, and it's locked, always. Well, no one can get in there. She sure looked as if she were trying. And knowing how you feel about people snooping around strangers... Miss Winters is not a stranger, Matthews. She'll be living with us from now on. Doing what, ma'am? I think you'd better go upstairs and finish your work, Matthew. Yes, ma'am. What's the matter with that man? Why does he act like that? Because he found you someplace you weren't supposed to be. But I was looking for David. Why in the basement? Well, I wanted to get started with the lessons and I couldn't find him anywhere. I'm positive he wouldn't come down here. Well, I looked everywhere else and then I thought I heard a noise down here. Miss Winters. Would you mind waiting for me in the drawing room? There are a few things I think we ought to discuss. Of course. I'll be up in a few minutes. 
You might check David's room again. Joe insisted on coming here, do you? Mother, would it really be so terrible if Vicky called the foundling home? Terrible? No, I suppose not. There's so much more. So many years covered with dust. So many dark corners. Maybe I should never have brought her here. Why not? Because she's lost and lonely. Because she looks in shadows. We've never had a stranger living here, Carolyn. Perhaps it was a mistake. Are you thinking of letting her go? Of sending her back to New York? Would you mind? Yes, very much. Mother, I like Vicky. So do I. You talk about shadows. That's all I've ever known, except for the times I could get away from this dungeon. But since she's been here, I don't know, it's been different. I found someone I can talk to, right here in this house. I don't want to lose her. She's that important to you? She's a friend. What about Joe Haskell? He has nothing to do with this. Oh, he has, Carolyn, you know he has. I don't see what. Darling, you know as well as I do why I brought Miss Winters here. To help take care of David. Partly. But mostly because of you. You and Joe. Mother, please. Carolyn, don't you think I know how difficult it's been for you growing up in this place? Darling, you know how much you mean to me. You mean everything. And I want you to be happy. I want you to find your own life away from this house. Mother, I've told you I why know I'd... that you don't want to go away and leave me. And I've told you that Miss Winters is here now to be with me and to help care for David. But you just said you wanted to get rid of her. If I don't, it will only be for you. No one else. Only you. Thank you. Mm. Sit down, Mother. Joe has the most wonderful news. What is it? I think I'll let him tell you. Wonderful news, Joe. It means you'll be able to get your own boat much sooner, doesn't yeah. it? That's just what I was telling Carolyn. I know how much it means to you. And to Carolyn. Yeah, it was such a surprise. I saw Mr. Malloy last night, and he didn't say a word about it. And then this morning, he called me off the boat. He was just about to leave the dock. And that's when he offered me the job, just like that, right out of the blue. Maybe he didn't make his decision until this morning. Uh, I guess I shouldn't knock my luck, but I, I keep asking myself, why me? Why did he pick on me? Maybe you're asking the wrong person. Not Carol. You did talk to Bill Malloy this morning. Well, I talk to him every morning. He keeps me informed. You talked to him about Joe, didn't you? Well, his name did come up, yes. He's a starter. Did you ask Miss, Mr. Malloy to give me the promotion? Goodness, Joe. If he consulted me about everything, he'd be a pretty poor manager, wouldn't he? I want to know, please. It was no surprise to you, was it, Mother? What's the matter with you two, anyway? Is it suddenly a crime if the owner of a business approves a promotion? Approves or suggests? Approves. 
Mr. Malloy called me this morning and he said he was thinking of offering you the job of checker. He wanted to know what I think of, th thought of it. That's all there was to it. Mr. Malloy said he thought you were capable of handling it, and I said I agreed. It had absolutely nothing to do with the fact that it would make it easier for you and Carolyn to get married. I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have said that. It, but it is what you were thinking. Father. Darling, I know you both love each other. There's no reason Father, in the world why you... Father, will you please, please, please stop trying to marry me off? <laughs> she won't be satisfied until she has me out of the house. Don't tell me that, Carolyn. I'm on her side. You're ganging up on me. We both want you to be happy. And I don't think it can happen for you, Carolyn, until you're out of this house. I guess I better see who that is. <laughs> 